Hi guys, David in Texas here. And what you're looking at today, guys, on my shop bench is a beautiful uh, little Epiphone Burst, Les Paul. Uh, it's not a Supreme, it's not a Pro, it's just a straightforward, beautiful little Les Paul Burst. Right, let's take a look at this. All the way down the body, it is gorgeous. I love these guitars. I own a couple of myself. Les Paul, I'm sorry, Epiphone uh, guitars. Anyway, what we're going to do today, <coughs> other than set it up and put new strings on it, we're going to put a new bone nut on it. The owner wants to do something different, wants to change this thing up, wants his tone changed. And what I'm going to do is do my utmost to uh, get this on camera this time. Alrighty. Now, the thing is, I've got to. Uh, move it around quite a bit to show you what I'm doing okay now Gibson or Epiphone is not glue in uh, their nut after before the varnish takes place okay normally what I do I'd be cutting around this uh, spot around the nut itself before I use a punch to get it out of there all right, punching a hammer, but uh, <clears throat> that's not really necessary. However, I've come across three of them that actually have been sprayed on. In other words, the finish goes over the nut after it's been glued up, and therefore creates a problem getting it off again. Okay, that is not good. And I wanted to warn you about this in case you do it yourself. Because you can chip up that paint and varnish right on the uh, edge here. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is go in there and look very carefully. I can see it's not been done, but just in case, just in case, I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to cut right on the nut itself, I'm not going to touch the wood at all, as well as go down the binding on the nut side to cut free any varnish that may have been on that, right? And then I'll do the other side, same way, and you can see there's separation on the binding and the nut, so you know there's no uh, varnish there, right? Real quickly, I'll just go across it. See, it's separated. Anyway, across the body of the guitar and the plastic nut, right on the nut itself, not the wood. And up the little side spot. So just in case there was any varnish there, it's now long gone. All right, now, it's not always necessary to remove the truss rod cover to knock that nut out. But better than safe than sorry. So I'll take that out real quick. And then I take a punch. I'll show you that in a minute. And a little guitar hammer to get it off. Now, some people will say, well, you know, why do you put a, you know, a bone nut on an electric guitar. Well, it's for the tone, the sustain, and uh, all of the above. It just sounds better. Sounds, oh, I can't, it's hard to describe, you have to listen to it. Try it yourself. It's pretty slick what it does. All right, now, I'll take that same blade, I'll run it down the part here on the headstock just in case. But I know darn well there's no spray on this. All right, that's it. So now, theoretically, that's been cut free of any type of uh, stuff that may have been there, any type of finish that have been, will be there. When I take these out, I take it out with my luthier's hammer and I use the metal side of it 
and put my tap right here, okay? Give it a little wrap. See how much glue they've used. They use a lot of glue. That should come loose here pretty soon. I'm in no hurry. Wow. I have never had one this hard to get off. We're going to go from a different direction and get it, get it loose. Well, there she went, finally. You can see they used uh, the wrong kind of glue on this. They used super glue all over the darn slot, which that's a nightmare to begin with. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, let's get the, the fitting part out and show it to you. Oh, man. Well, I end up breaking it, but here it is. All in one piece. And uh, one, just glue all over this thing. They just, I never will understand that about uh, Epiphone. It doesn't make a lot of sense. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to take my little micro chisels out and get that uh, glue out of there. That's what's remaining. And what I'm after is only the glue itself. I'm not after anything else. I don't want to bring up any wood if I can keep from it. Alright, hopefully you can see that glue that's in there. <clears throat> it's just kind of a big dollop. The other glue came off. Uh, it's still stuck to the nut. But here we got this big dollop of glue that's right here. And what I gotta do, I gotta get that off because I can't glue to glue. And I don't want to take off any more wood than I have to get crap out of here. You can see all that white's coming off. That's that glue. And it's just one big hunk of it. <sighs> a little bit more of it right there. It's all the way across. It's... Mm. And you can see, I think, I hope you can see, it's that white stuff coming up, that's the old glue. And they've glued it all the way across, which I don't know why they do that. You know, just to put two drops on is plenty. <sighs> you know? And why use that kind of glue? I have no idea. There's bitter, there's tight bond out there. I'm sure they're aware of that. And now I'm getting up against the uh, side of it and checking to see if there's any back over here. I think most of that come off with a nut. But there, it's pretty clean now. And we got the, got most of it off there. So it's no longer a mess. <laughs> if you can look at this, I don't know if you can see it very well or not, but you can see all that glue on there. That is amazing. As well as they glued it up against this too. I'll have to get that off as well, off the back side of this, this black, dark black part. That's because there's glue on it. I'll have to get that off as well. Well, I'll tell you what, no I don't. I'm just going to put two drops, one on each side of this, and I'm not going to glue this back. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put a drop there too. So what you see is that white stuff coming up again, that's the glue. Not the wood. I'm getting, I don't want to get any deeper than I have to get that damn glue off. All right, let's tilt it. We don't want that going up the thrust rod hole. All right, that's clean enough to do it. What I want to do, let's just get a little bit more off there. Clean that up. So I want to put a drop right there. I don't know, I don't. No, I don't. I'll put a drop on the side here, on each side of it. I want that glue off of this I'm gonna put a drop here and put a drop over here where it's cleaner and I get a little more clean I don't want to put it over the top of the uh, truss hole truss rod hole 
but I gotta put it on clean wood for it to hold properly. So there you go. That's how you remove the really tough ones. Uh, man, was that ever a pain. But it's off finally. I got this thing ready to put a new nut together for it and carve it up. And if you watch my Facebook lately, you've seen I've, got out, I've gone out, I broke down and I bought, believe it or not, a uh, bell sander with a disc attachment. I actually bought a, a complete table model. I didn't get a stand-up model and I sure as heck didn't get a, a, a new shaft for my old belt sander because it was just way too old and <clears throat> it's just not that reliable with my hands on it doing what I do. I mean it's a very large two inch belt sander and it gets in the way. My hands do too. <laughs> I'll be digging around get some bone material for this and put these things away. And I'll put these somewhere safe. I'll put the uh, screws in his cover in a bag along with his old nut. And we always bag these things up so they don't get lost. All right, so. This is the type of bag we put these in. Okie dokie. And then don't get lost out of these bags. Put this in a box or something, you're bound to lose it. Or put it into a holding spot on your shelf or your drawers, you're bound to lose them. I just come to that conclusion. Okay, so I'm going to be looking through my bone uh, yard collection. I've got a bunch more order, but I think I've got one that'll fit this just perfectly. So hang in there, guys. Okay, so I got my collection of bone out. I want to see if what I've got some of these. Uh, I've, started, I've begun cutting on them to shape them, but I don't think they're going to fit. No, that's too small. Uh-uh, that's too small, it's not even the binding area. Okay, one more. Let's see if this one does the trick. Let's see, that's, that's wide enough, tall enough. I don't like the way it's shaped though, it's pre-shaped. Nope, don't like that at all. All right. Well, here you go, guys. Here's the one that's going in it right there. <laughs> You're looking at a completely new, untouched bone, and it's actually the last of my good collection of bone. But I've got a dozen more on order. I hope they get here soon, because I got a bunch of these to do. Now I got that new. Now I got that new sander with that uh, disc. Wait a minute, wait a minute, here's one. Here's one, maybe this will fit. I have to cut it completely down from scratch. Nope, that won't work. So we're gonna go with a brand new nut right there. Nut material. And uh, shape it up <coughs> pretty much like the one that was on there. A few differences. Like I said, I've got my uh, new nut material coming in, and this is the last of my good stuff. Uh, this is old stock I kept. So I got to uh, do a lot of changes on this. Let me show you my new uh, uh, sander that I'm using. And I'm not using the belt because I'm totally terrible at it. That's why I bought this disc sander. So hang in there, guys. Okay, so there's my new belt and disc sander. You'll notice I've used the uh, disc already, but I've not used the belt because I'm just no good at those. I end up screwing the nut up, ruining it, using it all up, getting it too thin. <laughs> and uh, I've always gone with this method, right? The old uh, sandpaper and the vise method. 
uh, for the final ups. I think I'll still remain, I'll still do that. I'll just rough shape them out on my uh, sander and uh, fine tune them in with my uh, sandpaper. I think it's the best way to do this. But there's just so much bone to be removed, okay? So I saw away some of this uh, on this raw stock I've got here. On this one right here, I'll, I'll mark it, cut it with my bone saw, uh, and then I'll put it to my sander to shape it, uh, get a rough shape to it, and then take it to my sandpaper, do the finish up, then put it in my nut vise, which is you see was one in there right now that uh, was being for, worked as special, a special weird application. And uh, then uh, we're going to groove it. <laughs> Before that though, we'll put it in there right beside the old nut and uh, get some string spacings on it. If those spacings aren't just the best, I'll get my spacing rule out and uh, mark it with that accordingly and go from there. Okay, so hang in there guys while we get this all set up to start roughing it out. Uh, on the, uh, we'll start off with the uh, nut uh, vise and cut this to shape. Okay guys, <clears throat> this particular nut fits this uh, nut slot just perfectly. The width uh, the height scores too high, the length's too long. What I want to do is mark it on one spot and then come in with my uh, bone saw and cut it free of that. But if you'll look real closely, what I want to do is leave just a tiny bit extra on this so that uh, in case I fudge on it, I can always come back later. So I got a mark outside the line, and I'll take a uh, something with a flat edge like this old nut, and put me a nice sharp line there, like so. Now cut to that. Now I can always ground it down. I can't cut again that close to it. You know, if there's like just a uh, fourth of an inch left to cut off or eighth of an inch, I can't do that. It won't work. It'll crack on me. But uh, it's better to uh, uh, come in there and cut it close, right? I mean, right on, I'll cut on the line itself because there's still more gap there, and then take it onto my uh, disc and just and just take it down to uh, the proper size slowly. Okie dokie. So once that is done, it'll be time to uh, continue roughing in the shape. Okay, well, here I am. I'm back on my little nut vise, and I like working on it better than my uh, desk vise. So I move it around at you know my pleasure, and I'll just uh, put this in there straight, give it a gap so I can cut free, and I'll use my number ten nut saw, the thinnest I've got, and just come straight down, and it's a pull saw, so I'll be pulling it more than pushing it. But it works, you know, it kind of works both ways, though, you know pretty good pretty good saw all right and I'll get a little closer in there so you can see what the, what it's doing to this but I can't really get uh, much into it let's see if I can do this a little bit better and have you see more of it and that's what I'm trying to do with my videos lately guys I'm trying to improve upon the uh, the quality of what you see that you can see what I'm doing and my big old hands are not in the way all the time I think that's about as good as it gets as far as a close-up concerned with my camera. Doggone it. It should adjust, but it's not doing it. I, I, don't know. I guess that's as close as it gets. So, now's the time to find my little saw. And I finally put this in order so I can find it much easier. But, uh, this is kind of cockeyed to me guys because the camera's in the way but all I want to do is start my pull stroke just like that and I guess if I'm parallel there we go I can see can you see it yeah you can see some of it most of it this pull stroke saw so I'm doing more pulling than pushing or you can do it both ways but I'm trying to get close to that line, but I'm going cock out a bit here because the camera. I'm trying to keep it in the camera. 
that's no matter as long as I get this off now when you get towards the end of it you want to go let the blade itself do most of the work you don't want to push down too hard on it because it'll snap crack off so I'm doing my best to let this blade do the work and I gotta tilt it because the depth of the blade is just right at the depth of the nut now you see it cut it, it cut badly but I'm gonna, I'm gonna sand that anyway but you at least got to see what I'm doing and normally this would look nicer okay but anyway I also keep these parts I can ground these up and use them as paste to do repair work all right all right now the uh, nut's been roughed in shape roughed in and I'll get another uh, fitting measurement on it with the guitar's body okay and like I said once you cut it this close to the line you can't cut it again because it'll just crack and chip on you all right well you're back looking at the slot again and if you look at my cut yes I'm a little bit uh, over and I'll take that back over to my disc and I'll sand it down little by little and square it up as well and uh, you know I've had people ask me why don't you just cut it right you know on the same spot well the problem is with this bone I've got lately it has a very bad tendency to crack when I'm cutting it and if you'll look inside this bone you'll see a color difference there's kind of a uh, eggshell, oh, I'm sorry, there's more like a manila color on the inside of the bone where it's not going all the way through. But this is my better bone stock, okie dokie. Anyway, I'm going to remark the bone, okie doke, to where exactly I can't go past. And I'll slowly but surely bring it up to that point in time. And there she is right there I can't go past this spot here otherwise it's gonna be too small and like I said this is the last piece I've got so I'll do this very carefully guys but I'll show you what I'm doing on the uh, sander hang in there all right here's a close-up of my sander and the situation is I've got uh, a little bitty angle tray that I use however there's nothing to bolt it down with other than a a uh, extra vise so what I'm going to do is first of all pull this over to me get it closer to the edge of my work table my new work table and uh, rig up a, a, a C-clamp to hold that uh, angle table in place so I can get it at 90 degrees so hang in there alright here's my little saw and if you look I've got this pointed right at zero degrees on a lock well I'll just lock it down so that's what I want when I put it the uh, end of my part in there right like that but to me my eyesight says that's cocked okay it's not 90 degrees so what do you do <laughs> well you get something you really trust is my little angle here my little 90 and see if it is whoa, whoa damn it and see if it is 90 degrees and it's not it's just like I saw it it's cocked so let's loosen this up and put it where it real true 90 is which is right there so it's at oh shoot that even looks wrong let's see guys yeah hold on all right let's get it straightened out now all right there's 90 all right there's 90 for sure and it's two degrees past to get it flush 90 now <clears throat> when you're working with these saws and they're not very expensive uh, you have to uh, you know you have to go back and check everything on them be sure be sure you're not get hurt number one and then make sure that uh, everything is squared up and right with it and this one it just so happens is not okay and that's no problem I don't expect these little you know it's only a hundred bucks so it's not that expensive and it's not expensive a saw so what I'm going to do right this minute is put a piece of plastic on this so that my little C-clamp will grab that and pressure down on exactly on that uh, one spot of the uh, angle bench or plane. 
I gotta get sure I have enough room with my hands to get in there and move that part. But I don't want my plane moving. And the problem is my clamps are all too big to clamp down that one little spot on this plane that keeps it at 90. And that looks odd, but that's 90. According to my uh, square. And that's not going to move. Now, something that I want to uh, say real quick before I do this is you're going to hear a lot of noise. <laughs> because i got to turn on my vacuum cleaner, my shop vac. It is attached to this uh, saw and it attaches two places. It attaches on the uh, disc discharge as well as the uh, belt discharge. Which is the reason why I got it. Now, is there a way to fudge this? Yes, there is a way to mess this up. That would be to totally disregard the marks that I made. Okay? But the smart thing to do is to do it little by little. Uh, piece by piece come in here and get it squared up because it's kind of cockeyed right now You can see this is the bottom part is a lot longer cocked off the top Well come in here holding it against the guide And so I can't square this thing up Okay So that's my first task square it up Second task will be to remove it down to the line Hang in, here goes the noise. I'm just trying to get that squared up right now. All I'm trying to do is measure it in my square. Wow, <laughs> empty the vacuum. Anyway, that should be squared up now. It sure does look square all the way around. And it's short of the line. Hold on, guys. It's square and short of the line. But let me check it to be sure that my eyesight is just not messing with me. Of course, I trust my square. I've used it a long time. So let's see if we can get squared up on this, or what it should be. Bingo. Okay, so that's square now. Perfectly square. Sorry, guys. That's perfectly square. Okay. So I can trust this <coughs> all the way down to the line. And I knew by looking at this that it was one, two degrees off on this uh, little measurement here. And what looks to have happened is the tape that they put on here didn't fit quite properly to show the increments. They've got it over the edge a bit or it doesn't belong so they just basically put the tape on wrong to show true 90 degrees they weren't that accurate they didn't care that much i guess anyway always pays to measure now my next step is go back one more time verify that line i just put on here out on the guitar itself be right back well we want that line to go away it's right on the button so here we go with the noise again. I'm not pushing it, it's kind of barely putting pressure on this to go up against that uh, sandpaper. Overheat this, but I do want that line to go away. There it is. Right, that should be it. Okay, that should be it. Now the line's not gone, but I knew from putting it up there that uh, it's a little cockeyed drawing. <laughs> So, I may have to do a little bit more of that sanding down, but right at the moment, I've got a nice squared up nut to put in my guitar. Make sure there's no edges. Oh, it's just as smooth as a baby's butt, guys. Let me turn it around and show you what happened. 
Okay, now you see it. What I managed to do is make it perfect. Just perfect, guys. Perfect on every in every aspect. It's the right thickness. Now it's the right length. Now's the time to shape it. It means curving it backwards like this one is. Let me show you this one. It's a plastic one. Shaping it back like that. Okay. And then uh, grooving it. Right? Now, to uh, shape it like that, I will put it in uh, my nut file once again. And uh, definitely take off these rough edges. Like here and here and here and here the tops of them. But I will not take the edges off the bottom. That's not necessary. What I'm going to do is take off this edge here and round it backwards towards the uh, headstock. Because that's what I want. I want that break angle to be just like this break angle. Let me show you the side of this real quick again. See the break angle right there? That's what I want to copy. So all I'll do is use that nut basically and mark it on both sides uh, with the shape of that nut. Then take my hand file and do my utmost to copy it. Which I'm pretty good at doing. So hang in there. All right, well, I've managed to uh, draw on what I want. Except, still pretty good, even though it's out of focus. The shape I want it to be in on both sides of it. So I can check my work, and I'll be working from front to back as I uh, file this with my nut file. So we're going to switch back over to the nut file. And answer the phone first, because somebody loves me. <laughs> now somebody wants to know, where's my guitar? <laughs> Hang in there guys. Okay, so I've got my nut and my little nut file. I'll try to bend it towards you so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, it makes it a little more difficult for me to work with it. Look at all that old nut in there. Anyway, that's what I'm using. Regular file, my little tiny nut file. Tiny, yeah, right. Anyway, for some reason, uh, <laughs> Someone in my house loves to use this file to stir paint with. You can see, <laughs> of course, it doesn't stop it from working. This doesn't work as efficiently until that paint's out of there. So I'll get in here a little while and get it out. But I'm going to round this over, okay? And I don't want to take much off the front of this nut because the height is critical. So I'm going to start at the very back and start rounding it. And I can take those edges off too while I'm at it. I don't want those top edges on this thing, just like that. Yeah, that's good enough, right there. I don't want those on there to nick somebody. And I want to go slow and easy. I don't want to overheat this nut. And the thing is, I got plenty of time, so I'm not gonna pull out my Dremel and try to knock down parts of this with the uh, nut uh, sander I got on it. Only if I'm in a real rush will I get that thing out and try to work with it. And I'll switch this thing around. And it's shaping up rather nicely. And I'm working it up and down the nut. I'm not staying in one spot. I got kind of up and down sawing motion. As you can see, it's just barely starting to round over. So hang in there, guys. Okay, okay. Now I'm working on the nut itself. What I want to do is first of all send a shout out to a guy I watch the show all the time on YouTube is Guitarologist. I love to watch his show. You know? Just fun to watch. All the amps he works on. Okay, now the thing will stay in focus. Get a chance to watch it. Watch it, guys. Because he has some interesting old amps to work on. Of course, I got a few, but nothing like he has. He's got some really great old ones. Plus, he is so good at it, he does modifications. Which I do not do. I don't build amps, I don't modify them, I just fix them. We got the shape that we want. Alright, and backwards slanting, you see that now? 
along that line. Now it's time to put it back inside uh, the guitar itself for one more final markup to uh, verify these strings on it. And that means stringing it up with a, uh, a standby nut. This is old and broke when it came out. And I got a replacement nut to put on a plastic one that fits exactly the Les Paul Epiphone. Uh, so, I'm going to go in there and see if there's any better measurement for it. It uh, actually will work better if I do it with my spacing, but I don't think so. It looks like it's pretty good, so hang in there while I change things around. He brought with him his own strings, and we're going to put those on for him. These are a very lightweight gauge uh, strings. They're, they're no tens. Ernie Balls. And we'll get those on there, then do our <clears throat> comparison with this particular nut here, which is, uh, well, we'll show that. Hold on. That's plastic and a replacement nut for these guitars. And you'll see that I got lower mine substantially from the height, it's too high. But before I do that, uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, groove mine and set the uh, cut angle on them. Pretty much like you see there in that plastic one. Now the reason I'm doing this to check it is because I don't totally trust anybody, oh darn it, I don't trust anybody's judgment on these things. It just so happens you can add a tiny bit of spacing to these bound strings, these wound strings, and make them easier to play. Especially on these electrics. Get in there and get my favorite toy going. It's wound up. I want to get at least two wines on this. And I got three. That's a little bit much. Alright, now what I'm going to do is get the other uh, E on there to balance this thing out. And then I'll bring in my own nut and see where we be. And I'll show you that, how I do that in just a second. All right, that's tied enough. Now, I've got the uh, nuts pretty much where I want it. Side away. Alright. I can take mine and then finally on. And see where I am. Okay. So, yeah, upside down. There's my nut. And you see it's the exact same width. There are my marks, guys, for my strings. I can either trust that or not. That looks pretty damn close. Let me get my scale out. That's to, you know, just to be a chicken shit and be safe, you know. Better safe than sorry. Okay, this is my scale here, my string gauge scale. <clears throat> Let's see if we can't match this up with somebody else's gauge. Oh, that's not it. That's pretty close right there, guys. That's perfectly, all right? So it is right on the gauge. What you do with this uh, particular scale, guys, you check it against the nut 
and see it's not you know it doesn't match any you know scale at all then you know you got a problem but that one does match so what we're going to do is put our nut in there on top of it roughly mark them where these slots are then verify all this with my scale that looks about right but still verify with a scale Dave verify it with a scale what I'll do is check it once more with the scale and match it up Right, now as you can see I went back with my uh, little uh, flat edge and got these uh, lines marked proper so I can use my saw. And I'll be sawing back towards the back of this, right? So the depth's going to go towards the back of the uh, nut, not the front. And the same with my filing. There'll be a lip there to catch the uh, string on the front, but not much. Let's get 50% of it. But when I'm cutting up my number 10 saw, I'll be cutting backwards into it. Right, use my little nut file, little nut uh, vise right there, and I'll set up to show you how that's done here in just a second. I'm trying to get this camera to work with me on this close up, and it's just not doing anyway. What I'm trying to do, guys, is cut this uh, just barely at the front of the lip of this nut to get it started, and then go all back with the strokes. Okie dokie. And that's deep enough just to get it started and then go back and just barely go down into it. That's all I want to do. But I want to stay in line here. Keep this straight on that line. Parallel. But most of my strokes are going to go back towards the back of the nut to start my file work. Of course you can't uh, cut a nut and my number 10 bone saw works perfectly to start the uh, next size, well the fi size file I need to get in there and do the job right. Of course it's all different size files but like I said I'm just starting this and I'm cutting right on the line most of that line should kind of disappear if I'm on it. That some is going to show up from the old mark. And most of my cut, like I said, is towards the back. I just want the very front of the lip will not have a indention in it, a little bit of a cut to help my file go back. All right, well, there's what's called scoring the nut with the number 10 saw. All right. The next thing to do is get in there the right size files, like this number 10 file, and start the filing work. There's my score line. And what I'm going to do right now is just rounding out the hole. Let number 10. string I'm not going down the depth of this guys I'm just starting these holes but I can guarantee you that the 10's not going to go any deeper than that 0 0.07 uh, from the uh, edge of the hole I cut according to the radius of the guitar get that set up and the height I leave I left in the nut, but I'll be taking the height off the bottom of this nut. I'm sure of it. I think it's too high. All 
Okay, so the next one is a 26. So it's 10, 13, 17, 26. All right. All right. Then what's next? A 36. And then a 46. I'll put that one. Gotta verify that. I'm not sure. I've got that string on right now. And toss the package away. Yeah, 46. The next one is a 46. Yay! Ta da! 46. Like I said, I'm just putting enough on there to catch to the front of these. So I can put them into the nut itself and test it. Put them in the nut gap. And test it with all strings in it. So here I am. I'm ready to check the spacing on the these uh, this new, new uh, bone nut I cut. And see where we are. And I did wind it up enough so I could take this in and out at my pleasure, my leisure. Now I know it's already going to be too high. I already know that for a fact. <clears throat> what I'm concerned about only right now is the spacing. Okay. So let's go ahead and get those... Uh, Out the pitch. Keep them in place. Okay, so what it looks like, guys, I'm going to need to, uh, do a radius across the top of this to drop it. Now on the E is no problem here, but here is a problem. And the height, this is way too high. No, that's about right there. That's about right. We'll see. We'll see when we put those strings on, get it pitch. Pitch it to bits. That's right, my snark. I like my snark. It's a real simple to use uh, tuning instrument. There's E. And we'll check that uh, action here in a bit. And see where we are. Come on, baby, start over again. Okay, action time. It's got my little <clears throat> action scale. Let's see what we can do to work on the rest of this. All right, on force. Sorry guys, I have to take this out of the camera so I can look at it down the side of it. And what I can do is just take off the top of this Round off this top, right? To open up that string hole a little bit. <clears throat> I really like it. Okay, so let's get this next string on here. And let's just play it and see what we got right now as it is. Let's cut that free and give it some length.
got them switched around. I'm gonna put on the G string. And each time I put a new string on, I go less length because of the diameter of the string gets thinner. And really, I guys, I only need two wraps to do the job I'm doing. Look at that G string. That, I don't like that at all, that cut on this. It's not deep enough at all. All right, this is what? Uh, that's a 17. Okay. Let's go back to my files. Grab my little jewel tool. Start wrapping. Get below this. Nope, that went right over the top. Gotta be below, guy. Darn string gotta be below each other. Ow! That E keeps biting. Wait till I get smart and bend that out of my way. Alright, that's tight enough. My machine. This baby's gonna get bent over out of my way. Like that. Okay, so you can still see this while I'm winding it up and doing it. What you can't see is what I'm doing to the nut, darn it. Alright, I don't need to see the top two, but you need to see that and the nut. There we go. Let's see if it captures this one or not, because I just barely cut into these guys. This G's out of the saddle. I hate these saddles. I hate the okay there we go. Okay, so she's back in the saddle again. I'm back in the saddle again. <laughs> in the perfect depth and angle, guys. Oh, it's already got in the nut. Okay. Shit. It's already in the post. Alright. Watch these tips, damn it. And this is perfect depth. Already look at that. Perfect groove too, no binding. Uh, like I said, this B is not need as much wind as it's so much thinner. So I counter wrap it against the flow, counterclockwise. Come in here and start twisting. Right. Put it below. Well, you gotta stay below it. Alright. I just don't want to do that. Yeah, that's below it for sure. Jeez Louise. Alright, that's tying up by hand. Alright, let's get these whiskers off here. Let's get it to pitch. You witch. Alright, those are down. And uh, see what we came up with. Okay guys, here we are at the Epiphone Les Paul with a brand new nut in it. <laughs> How sharp that is. It's going out soon to get brand new strings. Anyway, we'll get him to play it for you. We'll get him to play it for you in that sounds. sharper guys much sharper oh, there we go out to again brand new string so any questions give me a holler David Texas bye